Hello everybody, this is the Photoshop Workbench and I'm Mark Johnson. It's awesome to have you here. During a recent RMSP Creative Compositing Workshop in Boulder, one of the lively participants, Lindsay Castor, presented an image of a train that triggered a variety of clever ideas. One of the most exciting suggestions was to gradually fade the train into a drawing or painting. Lindsay and I love the idea, so we got right to work. Although it's possible to accomplish this effect using nothing but Photoshop, I greatly prefer the drawing and painting effects found in FilterForge. FilterForge offers a free, fully functional 30-day trial. If you decide to purchase the software, click the hyperlink in the text associated with this workbench. Then enter the code UD4NSWEV0YSA. You don't have to memorize that. It's also included <laughs> in the text associated with this workbench. So enter that code during checkout to receive 40% off your order. Now, FilterForge periodically offers discounts that are even greater than 40%. I've seen up to 60%. In fact, they're running 60%. Um, on the day that I'm recording this workbench. Unfortunately, that 60% will probably have expired <laughs> before you actually hear this workbench. So, um, if you want my 40% discount, enter the code that's associated with this workbench. Uh, if you can get something more than 40%, go for it. <laughs> uh, definitely go for it. But if you want me to receive a commission, um, which I would love, then you can go through the hyperlink um, associated with, with this workbench. Anyway, are you ready to join me for an exhilarating ride? <laughs> this is absolutely awesome the way this comes together. So uh, let's do it. We're going to dive in. Uh, first thing you want to do is open a photo of something long and narrow like, uh, like a train um, or a snake or an airplane, something like that. Uh, in this example, I'm working with a train that has been processed into a pseudo HDR using Photoshop's HDR toning feature. Now, I love the way this train looks. You can see there's a big white halo around it. That halo is not going to be much of an issue once we're done with this process. So don't worry about getting a little halo if you decide to go with um, an HDR look. And in this case, again, I used Photoshop's um, HDR toning feature to get this look. This could also be done using Photomatix Pro. Uh, I just wanted to do it quick and dirty, so I use this one right here. All right. Now, uh, the next thing you want to do is save off a copy, a flattened TIFF copy of this image. Okay, so you need a TIFF copy that you can then open into FilterForge. So let's go through that process. Save a flattened TIFF, and then here's what you do. Okay, I'm going to go over to the FilterForge site right here. And again, there's a hyperlink associated with this workbench. So uh, you can get to FilterForge. And um, I'm going to download from FilterForge into my personal FilterForge library. I'm going to download two filters. So I'll click on the Filters tab right here. And I'll enter in the word or the words watercolor painting and click search. Look, 60% discount. I don't think it'll still be there when you hear this, but um, bear in mind you can get 40% off uh, by using my code. Now click search. We want this one called watercolor painting by Kachubi. Uh, make sure you get watercolor painting, not a watercolor painting, if you're trying to uh, mimic the effect I'm after here. So click either on the thumbnail or this hyperlink here. It's going to bring that up right here. And then click the Open This Filter in FilterForge button. And you see it will open right here. Okay? And we'll get back to this in just a moment. Let's go back to your browser. Click on Filters again. And enter in the search field here the words Crosshatch Drawing. And click Search. Now take the crosshatch drawing by Northern Shadow and open this filter in FilterForge as well. Okay, so now you have your two effects loaded up into your personal library. 
Now what you want to do is open up the image of the train. So you're going to choose File, Open Image here in Filter Forge. You're going to locate that image of the train. And here it is. I'll click Choose. And it's going to open that file. Now, when it opens it, uh, you will see the crosshatch drawing filter being applied right now. So, uh, the preset that I used, and you can certainly experiment with these, but I used this preset right here. I think this is what, uh, the eighth one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, the eighth preset um, is the one that I ended up liking. I think I did actually, when I created this image, I did go into settings here. Okay, I went into settings and I adjusted some of these settings. Uh, I'm not going to take the time to do that today. Um, that'll take up too much time, but you can certainly play around. Then click Save Image As. Give it a meaningful name. Um, include the words crosshatch drawing with that. Uh, put it in a meaningful location. Save it as a TIFF. Click the Save button. And then you can save this just as an 8-bit TIFF because you're not going to be doing much color correction on it, so it doesn't need to be 16-bit. I'm going to cancel that because I'm not going to take the time to do that right now. I'm just pretending. I've already created these files. Okay. Now what you want to do, you've already got the train loaded up. Come down here to, I'm in Creative. Come down here to Watercolor Painting. Click on that. I double clicked, but it need only be a single click. <clears throat> I don't know which preset I used here. Um, the first one's real nice. I think the what is that? Six, seven, I think the eighth one is real nice. Several of these are. Just, just double click on them and see what happens. Then go into settings and make some adjustments. I think I made a few adjustments to get rid of the narrow white lines um, between the colors here. And then click Save Image As. Give it a meaningful name. Put it in a meaningful location. Save it as a TIFF. Click the Save button and as before, 8-bit is beautiful. Again, I'll cancel out of that. So you now have saved off a watercolor version of this train as well as a crosshatch drawing. And they look beautiful, very authentic, because they happened in Filter Forge, which is the world's greatest um, way to create beautiful filters and to use beautiful filters um, if you like things uh, like these artistic effects. Okay? Now, what we're going to do is head back into Photoshop right here. Uh, you can actually see these files are saved off. Let me just move those off screen for a moment there. All right. I'm going to come into this image. Oh, and by the way, the completed look that we're after, let me just show you this. I didn't show you at the beginning. This is the completed look that we're after. You can see this is the HDR tone train. It fades into a crosshatch drawing back here, and it's surrounded by a watercolor effect. So it's got three things going on, watercolor effect, HDR tone train fading into crosshatch drawing. That's what we're after. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take this uh, image and we're going to select the train. Your selection doesn't have to be perfect. It needs to be pretty decent, but not perfect. So I'm going to use the quick selection tool to do this. Okay. It's in its default mode here. I'm going to zoom up and I'm going to start painting. Now, this would take a long time, probably about 10 minutes for me to do if I were actually going to do it well. Uh, and I'm not going to take that 10 minutes. I've actually so stored off this selection and I'm going to use the stored version of it. But you can see how when you're in areas like this you can paint with a great big brush. Okay. When you get down into smaller regions where you have to be more detailed, shrink your brush using the left bracket key. If it spills outside, let's see if I can get it to spill outside here and do something wrong. It's pretty good but Here's an example. All right, right here. I don't want this area right here selected. So I'm going to either click here to go to subtract from selection, or I'm going to hold Option or Alt. Size the brush down to nice and small. I'm going to paint in this region right here. See if I can get it to pop out there. There we go. Requires a few more paint strokes than I was hoping, but that's all right. Again, don't strive for perfection. Just go for the best you can. I'll also option or alt paint right across this. And I'll continue working in here. I'm not in option or alt anymore. I'm in add to selection mode. Continue working around that. Got to work your way all the way back down through here. Um, I am going to recommend selecting this uh, signal post 
Um, but work your way all the way to the back of the train. You can select that or not, it's up to you, but go ahead and select as much as you can. Down in here it's going to get really challenging because you got these shadow areas. Um, in that scenario, what I decided to do, just because I thought, man, that's a real difficult selection, I just don't want to take the time, I went ahead and selected, I'll show you, I got a little sloppy with this and it totally worked. Um, I painted and I, I did this. I'll show you. Painted right along here. See how I'm allowing this to spill into the railroad ties down here as well as into some of the gravel. I thought, well, I'll do that and that's going to work. Um, uh, a lot better than trying to select this train. It, you can select the train or whatever you're trying to select, but if it's difficult like this train, you can be a little sloppy, and I'll show you how you can get away with that. So anyway, you get the idea. Um, you get the idea. I'm going to deselect here. I'm going to go to the Channels panel where I've stored this selection, and I'm going to Command or Control click on the thumbnail right there in order to um, load up the selection that I actually created. And I'm going to get rid of this channel because that's not really a step that you need to know. <laughs> All right, so there's my selection. You can see what I did here and the way I let it spill down. So that's my actual selection I used. All right, so we got the selection. Now what we want to do is we want to save it because it took you some time to create this. So choose Select, Save Selection, and I'm calling this, I call it Train First Draft because I figure I may, whoops, I figure I may need other drafts of this, but I didn't know as I was first creating this. So train first draft, click OK. Now that gets stored in the channels panel, and I'll show you what that's all about coming up here really soon. Okay? Now what you want to do is you want to add a mask. So you're going to be adding a mask to this layer. Um, the best way to do this in a, in a big hurry is to click the refine edge button right here. Okay? And then, look, <laughs> I'm viewing this on white. There you have it. That's looking really awesome, by the way, just as is. In fact, it's fabulous. Um, <laughs> I don't really need to refine the edge of this mask, but um, ah, if you want to, you can pull the radius slider out. You can click Smart Radius. You can play around with this if you want. You can even feather this out a bit. And again, you can see I'm being real casual and loose about what I'm doing here. And the reason for that is because I'm going to be dropping this over a watercolor background. And it's going to hide some of the sort of uh, deficiencies of your selection. So I could do all that. And in fact, I'll just go ahead and do that all. Drag this all the way out. I've got Smart Radius. I'm going to turn it on and off and see what the difference is. Ah, let's leave Smart Radius on. Let's go ahead and kick the feather up. Let's say we want that. Okay, so uh, play around with this. Go ahead and see what happens. Remember, you've saved the selection that you originally did. So what's happening to the mask where you're sort of disrupting your selection and spreading it out, feathering it, don't worry about that. It's not actually impacting the selection you saved. You can always get back to that other one. All right, now output this to a layer mask. Go ahead and output to a layer mask and click OK. All right, now you can see there's nothing but transparency behind it, but that's not going to be the case for very long. <laughs> now what we're going to do is drop in the watercolor that we generated through FilterForge. So here is the watercolor image. Um, I'm going to do a select all and an edit copy. Okay, move over to here. I want to paste it, so I'll choose edit paste. It's going to show up on top so I'm going to then drag that layer right down below the other one. Look now. You have the HDR tone train sitting on top of the watercolor background. That alone is awesome. <laughs> I love this stuff. Can you tell? That's fabulous. So another thing I might do here is I want to drain some a little color out of here. I'm going to go to the adjustments panel, go to hue saturation, and I'm just going to I'm just going to knock a little blue out of that. It's just looking a little too blue for my eyes. So I'll go with something like that. There we go. Now, uh, that was sort of a, a tangent. <laughs> Alright, now what we're going to do is bring in the crosshatch drawing. So that means I'm going to take this, do a quick select all, Command or Control A, a quick copy, Command or Control C, Okay, move over here, let's get that all the way out, Move over here, 
and do a quick paste, Command or Control V. All right, there's the crosshatch drawing, but <laughs> it's not where I want it to be. That's just going to require a couple masks. And here's what we'll do. We'll click the Channels panel. You saved your selection. It gets stored as what's called an alpha channel into the Channels panel. Now you can hold down Command on the Mac or Control on the PC and click on the thumbnail for this stored alpha channel. Okay, it loads your selection. Go back to Layers and add a mask. Looking good, with one exception. My whole train right now is crosshatch. And I don't want that. I want it to go from HDR toned or just regular look to crosshatch back here. So that means I'm going to take this layer, the crosshatch layer, okay? Take that layer and I'm going to choose layer new group from layers. So I'm grouping it. Group one is fine, or I could call it crosshatch if I want to be careful in my naming. So now it's inside this crosshatch group. What we're going to do is we're going to add a mask to the group now, grab the gradient. I want a black to white gradient here, and I want a linear gradient. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is click and drag right in here. Let me do that again. Click and drag right through here. And you'll notice, let me come up here a little more up front. You'll notice now your train goes from regular train or HDR toned if you do that to crosshatch drawing back here. <laughs> so it's like we have two masks on this train. One mask is this, that's where you see the crosshatch, and then another mask, mask that's this, and that is creating the blend between the layers below, um, specifically this layer, no, sorry, specifically this layer, and this. So you see what you're getting there? The crosshatch? So look at that. <laughs> um, I don't know about you, but uh, this is fun stuff. So um, all it really requires is um, using a couple Filter Forge filters. Again, you could use Photoshop filters, but they're just not going to be as sophisticated as this. And then um, you're going to be making a, a, a pretty intricate selection, fairly intricate selection using the Quick Selection tool. And then you're going to be working a lot with the mask so that you can blend the layers together just the way you want to blend them together. And your result is going to be something like this that um, is visually exciting. <laughs> anyway, uh, Lindsay, thank you for bringing this to light for me. And um, RMSP, thanks for letting me run a, a workshop where this came to light. <laughs> Filter Forge, thanks for offering a 40% discount to my audience. And audience, thank you for being here. Have a tremendous day. Take care.